Hello everybody, Grim here. Going to do another X56 video today. We're going to talk about how to fine tune your flight stick over here, this guy, right? We're going to fine tune him for DCS World so that our aircraft will perform uh, the way that we prefer, nice and precise and controllable and easy for us to use. So let's get right into it, shall we? Uh, what we are going to do, we are going to go to our Logitech software right here. We're going to click on settings. We're going to click on the picture of the flight stick. And we're going to get into explaining how all this gobbledygook works. I've used flight sticks since the 90s. I understand how they work and calibrating them and, and yada yada. But I have to admit, the first time I looked at this software, I was a little overwhelmed. It was a little bit more options than I really thought that it was going to be. But um, actually, I really like the controllability that it gives me. So first things first, we have to understand a little bit about how the axis work in relation to the airplane. So you can see we have three axis up here, x-axis, y-axis, and the rudder. For those of you that don't know, that means the direction, uh, a direction. So for example, x-axis, that means left and right, basically. If you're going left and right on the flight stick, that's the x-axis. If you're going forward and backward, that's the y-axis. And if you're twisting the stick clockwise and counterclockwise, that's your rudder. So the x-axis, okay, that means if we're going left and right on the flight stick, and in game what that's going to do is make your aircraft bank left or bank right. That means it's going to roll over on its side, either its left side or its right side. You can even bank so much that you go all the way upside down. You use banking when you're turning. I'm not going to try to explain banking. That's part of basic flight videos. Uh, that's a different subject but what we need to do today is we want to create a tuning for our flight stick so that when we're using it in the game we can bank the aircraft really nice and precisely easily controlled so we're gonna look at this graph all these axes pretty much work the same, but I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on this first one here. Then I can go faster on the second ones. So when I go left, you'll see that the little circle moves all the way down to the bottom left corner. And basically that means that I'm at the leftmost extreme uh, magnitude. How intense, how strong the aircraft is going to bank, right? If I just go a little bit, the aircraft is going to bank left if I go left but only slowly. But if I go really hard left, all the way left, then the aircraft is going to bank very quickly to the left. So that's what that's what this is about. If I go right, the aircraft's going to bank right. If I go all the way right, it's going to go very fast to the right. If I just go a little bit to the right, it's just going to bank a little bit. So how do I know how extreme? Uh, well, basically, if I go all the way, that's all the way, right? Whatever all the way is in the game, that's what I'm going to get. Now, if I want to, I never do this, but if I want to, I can come up here and I can slide this slider down and I can take away that extreme bank, right? I can say um, only go, if I push the stick all the way, only bank half as much. Don't bank the full amount. I need to show you this too. If I push the stick all the way to the right, it's still going to go to the top right corner even though I move that limit down. Why is that? Because I didn't hit the apply button down here. When you hit the apply button down here, what you're really doing is you're reprogramming the microchips inside the flight stick. Now that I've reprogrammed it, if I go all the way to the right with my flight stick, 
I'm still only banking half half the amount okay now there's another one over here and what does that do well in this case I've set it so that it only banks half as much if I go all the way well what if I want to make it so that it banks half as much if I only go halfway I can come down here I can slide this slider in and hit apply and after it reprograms now I only have to move my flight stick about half as much and I'm at the limit of what I set uh, about half the intensity so I hope I'm not being too confusing or too wordy but basically what these blue lines do is you can put limits on how extreme the intensity of the value that the joystick is sending back to the computer is either you can go all the way the most that's possible or you could decide to limit it like that and over here with this slider on the right you can say I have to move the flight stick all the way to the right in order to get the maximum value that I programmed in or I can say ah, you only have to move it half as much to get the maximum value or for example if I set it over here it would be very extreme right my flight stick would be extremely sensitive where if I just move the joystick the slightest amount it's already maxed out it would be very hard to fly the aircraft that way it would be very very unstable so I don't really use those I leave those all the way out because I want resolution I'm not sure the word I should use here but I want to have the ability to just go a little bit or a little bit more or a little bit more or a whole lot I want to have that option so the way that I do that is by leaving those wide open but they are there if you decide to use them you can so the next thing we're gonna talk about is dead band what the heck is a dead band so right now if I'm just leaving the joystick um, the flight stick sit on the desk I keep calling it a joystick because back in the 80s that's what we used to call it on the Atari was a joystick and I've been calling it that ever since okay so the flight stick if I just leave it sit here on the desk nothing's happening right but if I touch it even though I'm not trying to change I'm not trying to bank left or right I'm just grabbing it just by me touching it you see that that white circle starts to move around if I wiggle the flight stick just very gently I'm getting a lot of wiggle in there and I'm not really supposed to like I'm not even really pressing on the the stick spring I'm not trying to bank right now I'm just it's just got a little bit of slop in it a little bit of wobble in it it's very loose and that could cause a problem in game if I was to grab my flight stick in game not like I would ever really not have my hand on it but it shouldn't be doing that it's gonna cause my aircraft to be constantly wiggling left and right on the bank it, it's not right we don't want that so the way that we fix that is we put in a dead band and uh, you can just slide this little slider right here I like mine at about 106 and don't forget to program it right don't forget to hit apply but basically what that does is that now when I wiggle 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 you ever hear that song wiggle 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 I love that song so uh, when I have that wiggle 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 on my joystick right or when I just touch it with my hand nothing's happening this little flat spot that I made is basically saying don't output anything except zero for the first little bit of this uh, motion on the flight stick just ignore it and I can turn that up or down so that even if I started to push left or push right it would still ignore it if I chose to I'm just trying to adjust it so that it ignores that loose 
sloppy wiggle that the X56 has. That's all I'm really trying to do. So the next the next thing is curve, right? What the heck is this curvature stuff? What we're looking at now is a linear graph, which means that if I move the flight stick a little bit to the right, I get a little bit of bank. If I move it a little bit more, I get a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. If I'm way over here, okay, and I move my flight stick just a little bit to the right, I get just a little bit more bank. Whether I'm over here or over here or over here, it's all the same. If I move the flight stick a half inch to the right, I get the same amount of bank as if I was way over here to the right. It's kind of like saying an inch at the beginning of the ruler is the same distance as an inch at the end of the ruler. It's the same inch. That's basically what we're doing with linear. Okay, But mm, that can make the aircraft a little bit hard to control. Some people will fly it this way, perhaps. I like to do it a little bit differently. I like to put a little bit of a curve on mine. And we're going to use the S curve. The J curves I'm not going to cover right now. We're going to talk about S curves. Okay. So what in the heck is an S curve? Down here you'll see your S curves. Uh, this is the regular linear one where we just were. Or I could have an S curve. I still want to have my dead band. I'm going to... I gotta keep programming that back in apparently. So that gets rid of the wiggle wiggle. Now what does the S curve do? What is the point? The point is when you bank to the right oh I forgot. What did I forget? I forgot to program it, right? I have to program it in order to see the result. If I move the joystick just a little bit to the right, I start to bank, but just a little bit. If I move a little more, a little more, a little more, I'm not banking that much more. It's very little. But all of a sudden, I hit this curve here, and I move a little bit more, and I get a whole lot more bank, right? So if I just make subtle movements, it's very easy for me to make subtle movements if I just want to make a fine adjustment. But if I want to make a rapid movement, I just push the stick really far and I'll get a really extreme bank really quickly. Um, now it's impossible to my mind to look at this graph and know exactly what bank you're going to like. You have to actually go into the airplane and play with it and see if you like it or not. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how I get it tuned up for my personal preference. Okay, so here we are in DCS World, and we're working on our bank, right? If I go left with the flight stick, I bank left. If I go right, I can bank right. I can go all the way over, and what I'm trying to do is make this so that it's nice and precise and easy for me to control and I'm not flying all over like some inexperienced horrible pilot that I am. <laughs> so uh, what we're doing we're gonna look down here at this carrot this little triangle here and what I want to do is I want to easily be able to decide where I want to move the carrot to. Move the carrot there easily and be exactly where I want to be without having to... Oh, I went too far. Let me go back again. All right, so let me show you what the way we've got it now. I'm going to try to land my carrot over here on this line okay and let's see if I can do it or not and I want to stop directly on it right okay that's not too bad I missed a little bit but that's pretty good okay so if I did not have this adjusted right 
for me what might happen is that I would try to go over to that carrot and it would shoot way past right and I try to go back to center and I would overshoot and have to recorrect so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get my x-axis to where I can hit those little marks easily whatever one I decide to hit I overshot there a little bit did you see me oh I did again see him overshooting just a little bit or I didn't quite get enough right so what I do is I make adjustments to this curve so that little movements of the flight stick don't move the carrot as much but big movements of the flight stick make uh, make the carrot move all the way to the end very quickly it's a trade-off right it's a trade-off I'm saying instead of giving me even adjustments all the way across I want my little adjustments to be more subtle but that also means that my bigger movements are going to be more amplified it's a trade-off so I find that I like my value here set at 741 for me personally just for the heck of it I'm gonna change it to 800 and we'll show you guys how it responds differently don't forget to hit apply or it won't do anything so here we are and I've made the adjustment and what you'll see now is that I can actually move very slowly and very precisely and man I can really get those I can really hit those uh, points better fly up so I don't hit the ground here I can really hit those marks uh, those represent degrees of bank by the way I haven't read the manual lately I don't even remember if they're five degrees or, or just what I don't remember to get a faster motion if I want to bank quickly I have to go a little bit more extreme so it's up to you it's personal preference in all actuality I kinda like this one I might I might stick with it for a while and see how I like it so let's go back now and we're gonna talk about the y-axis which is the pitch right if I wanna dive down or if I wanna climb let's go back and talk about adjusting that one so here we are we're gonna talk now we're gonna click on the y-axis and it's the same thing okay I already have this one set up for me a little bit already but you can see that I have a little bit of a dead zone in the middle there that flat spot I have the dead band and so when I'm just wiggling the stick up and down forward and backward I should say just a little bit wiggle 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 nothing happens but if I push on it intentionally all right what I the way I have mine set up is so that when I pull back on the stick the nose pitches up and when I push forward on the stick the nose pitches down that's how real aircraft works but there is a way to come in here with the with the linear graphs you can make it go the other way but I don't like that for two reasons one it isn't the way that real aircraft are and it's not the way I'm used to flying the other problem is it's linear it's not a curve and I like my curve so let's switch back to DCS world now and we'll see how that's cooperating so here we are in DCS world and as you can see right now I'm climbing I don't want to climb I want to level out how I have my airplane trimmed has a, an effect on this but that's a different video so I'm very gently I can move forward and backward on my stick if I want to pull back on the stick I can land it right on the line if I want to land on 10 I can land on 10 if I want to go down to 5 let's see if I can land up oh, I overshot a little bit so maybe what I need to do is make some little adjustments 
Now if I wanted to shoot up really fast, I can just crank all the way back on the stick. It's still going to climb very quickly. That's easy. That's not a problem. The trick is I'm um, getting the fine tuning adjusted. That's what I really want to do. So I think I'm going to try a little tweak on here. Let's see. I think I'm going to try setting my curve to about 800 because that worked unexpectedly well on the other on the other axis. I'm going to apply that and try it out. Now this brings me to a point. As you play this game and you get better at flying over time, periodically you may go back and reinvestigate your curves because you may find that your taste has changed. You may prefer to to have it set up a little differently. You may have adopted a little bit different style. So let's see how this works. So let's see now. Can I hit exactly 5? Yeah, pretty close. Can I hit exactly 10? Uh, I overshot a little bit, but not that much as before. Let's try to go to 15. Okay. I'm using... Uh, I'm using the little crosshairs, not the circle, by the way. That's uh, the, I think people call that the boresight cross. This is the velocity vector here. I'm using the boresight cross. Let's see if I can just hit my marks precisely. And like I said, how I have my aircraft trim makes this harder or easier. That's uh, another discussion for another video. I'm I'm pretty happy with this. I think I like this 800. I think I like it better than what I had before. So I'm just going to call that a day. Alright, let's talk about the rudder. So here's my rudder. And you can see that for some reason my rudder, when I'm not touching the stick, the rudder's not even centered. It's a little ways up on the right side already. And I really don't know why. And of course if I, if I twist, right? I'm not twisting very much at all. My hand might naturally twist this joystick, and that would make the aircraft start to change its heading a little bit. I believe they call that yaw. It would start to yaw a little bit. Nobody uses that word, yaw. We talk about heading. So we don't want that, right? So the way that I got around that, actually, is I put in a huge dead zone. I have a dead zone on this one of about 404. It's huge. And I found that I liked about 834 for my curvature on my rudder, which I have to be honest with you. Let me program this. I never even really use the rudder that much when I'm uh when I'm flying around. What you're supposed to do is when you're making a cur when you're making a turn, when you're banking, you're supposed to also give it a little rudder twist and that gives you a faster more efficient turn but I never think of it I never remember the one time that I do use my rudder a lot is when I'm coming in for a landing and I'm I'm starting to drift off the center line on the runway just a little bit the rudder is a good way to get just a little bit right back on there again but it's not so easy and I think this joystick, my particular one, there's something wrong with mine. I'm going to go back to DCS. We're going to show you how the, uh, how the rudder responds to my particular settings. So here we are. And if I just, even if I twist my stick, okay, I went a little too far. If I twist my stick just slightly, nothing happens, and that's because of that huge dead zone that I put in. But if I really start to turn my rudder, right, if I really start to twist my stick clockwise and counterclockwise, I can get, I can get the rudder to cooperate. I can get it to move. Now, what I've been thinking about doing which is a little bit dirty because it's not the way that real aircraft work. The throttle has a thumb knob on it and it has a nice center position on it where you can feel it when it's in the center. 
it's got a little detent or I can dial it one way or the other way with my thumb on my throttle hand and I've been thinking about setting the rudder up to work on that knob that's really dirty that's not I don't believe that's the way real aircraft are flown but it would be a lot easier to do mechanically it's a little bit like power steering for the rudder I think so I may try that out. I think I'm going to get better results with it. It's definitely not accurate, but nah, whatever. I think that's about it for this video. We're going to wrap this up. So we covered a lot of things. We covered X, Y, and X axis, Y axis, and the rudder axis. We covered how to put limitations on how much magnitude the stick puts out with this slider here. We talked about how to put limits on how far you have to move the stick in order to get maximum magnitude which is over here. And S curves for sticks. We talked about linear versus a curve. We talked about inverting the axis. There's also a little symbol here where you could lock it out. It just makes a flat line. Um, I don't know why you would bother doing that unless you just wanted to have the game ignore a certain access for some weird reason. But um, that's what we have here. We talked about how you have to hit apply in order to actually program the stick, the microchips inside the stick. And then when that's done, you can exit out. The program's still running. It's over here hidden, but the stick is already programmed. So that's it. That's the end of the video. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, we'll catch you next time. Grim out.